after having dealt with the natural methods of contraception let's now move on to another temporary method of contraception that is a barrier methods so barrier means there is some obstacles between two things and here barrier methods are employed to prevent meeting of sperms with the ovum so there are many major types of barrier methods which can be utilized for this and uh, it can be in the physical uh, barrier methods or chemical barrier methods or a combination of physical and uh, chemical barrier methods so chemical barrier methods they produce sperm embolization uh, or they kill the sperms so that the and the sperms cannot enter into the uterine cavity the most common and the most popular physical barrier methods is a male condom it's a contraceptive made of latex or a polyurethane nowadays and this is rolled over the erect penis before having sex usually it is 15 to 20 cm in length and 2 to 3.5 cm in diameter and polyurethane condoms are better are thinner than the latex condoms and they are more comfortable also and uh, this the usually these condoms are sold over the counter you know don't need any prescription for this and also supplied free by the government and one of the most popular methods of contraception used in india it's also an effective barrier to pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections so it's supplied free like i said by the government so it uh, prevents the entry of uh, semen into the vagina since that the bar barrier is formed and it must be worn at all times during intercourse otherwise the semen will escape the condom must be held carefully when taking out the penis from the vagina so that is when the maximum chances of spilling of the semen occurs into the vagina so there are various types of uh, so this needles are available it's uh, the dry needle that is uh, dry it's which is a plain needle then there is a deluxe needle which is a lubricated one and the super deluxe needles that is uh, ultra fine and lubricated and raksha condoms are used uh, this thing are supplied with a spermicidal coating so they are will be much more effective than the other needles uh, the thing so whenever you are applying um, uh, the male condoms the uh, you should squeeze the tip of the condoms so there is no air trapped over here and uh, he continues to hold the erect penis while unrolling the condom to the base of this uh, sig penis so before rolling out this is how the needle looks and this is pinched and then it is rolled over the erect penis so as there is a male condom there is also a female condom this is a pouch made of polyurethane which lines the vagina and it should also line uh, line the external genitalia it is lubricated and appears similar to the male condoms and uh, it's uh, usually 17 cm in length loose fitting with one flexible polyurethane ring at each end here there is one ring and there is one ring over here also uh, this is much tougher than the male condom and that's why the uh, bursting of the condom doesn't occur uh, as easily as that of the male condom so inner ring is closed at the closed end and this is smaller and compared to the this is the outer ring which is much which has got a more diameter so inner ring is inserted at the apex of the vagina so there goes the inner ring and outer ring remains outside and covers the external genitalia uh, so it is uh, pre lubricated uh, has combined features of condom and diaphragm which will be coming to later so the closed end of this one it this covers the cervix is can can be put by uh, any time before sex and uh, can be worn during the puerperal period unlike the diaphragm which we'll be discussing in a short while so this is how it is introduced and there it goes there it goes inside the 
uh, vagina and covers the cervix. So that the inner portion, this will be covering the cervix. So it gives uh, also protection against uh, sexually transmitted infection and pelvic inflammatory disease. Uh, however, it is quite expensive and that's how not, it's not become that popular. It can be removed immediately after the intercourse and uh, usually it is a one-time use but uh, nowadays the ones which are available, uh, they can multiple uh, uses can be made of it by washing, drying and lubrication. So this is how this has been introduced and covers the cervix over here. So failure rate is about 5 to 21 per 100 women years uh, and usually below uh, this thing so though it seems to be more effective uh, but it's not routinely used. So uses of condom uh, is used as an elective this includes both male and female here elective contraceptive method it says an interim form of contraceptive uh, during pill use following vasectomy and if an intrauterine device is thought lost until a new intrauterine device can be refitted. So then it can be used during treatment of vaginitis and uh, immunological infertility, male partner to use it for three months. And then the, it used to be done earlier but nowadays it's not done that frequently. And when used correctly and consistently, uh, the this thing and especially with the spermicidal, the pregnancy rate is uh, failure rate is three pregnancies per 100 women years. So merits of condo, uh, this includes both male and female, is the most simple and effective methods, easy to carry and use, it is disposable and cheaper and easily available and uh, that is for the male condo. And it is of course free government supply, no medical supervision is required, it's protect from the sexual uh, transmitted infections, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease and cervical cancer and uh, prevents also precancerous conditions of the cervix, reduces the incidence of tubal infertility and ectopic pregnancies and usually uh, useful whether coital frequency is infrequent and irregular. Otherwise one will have to be used pills or other methods. So they, though there are merits, there are so many demerits also. So if not used correctly, it may slip or get torn off and the semen gets spilled into the vagina. So in some rare cases, the person may have allergy to latex. This is not there with the polyurethane material. Some people may not enjoy sex because of the interference with the sensation. So this also is better with the use of polyurethane condoms. And it has to be discarded and uh, one coital act and uh, re ready supply must always be available with the individual and uh, sometimes buying may cause uh, embarrassment and uh, male man's cooperation is needed over here and sometimes what happens especially if the female condom is being used the it even should be careful that the the penis goes inside the condom and not between the vagina and the female condom so that time also the conception it can fail. So usually there are no contraindication to use of condoms. However, there is a severe allergy to latex rubber. Uh, rubber. So a change of brand is advocated in that instance or the polyurethane condoms can be used. Otherwise it is quite safe contraceptive to be used. So next in line of the barrier contraceptive is diaphragm. It is an intravaginal device made of soft synthetic rubber or plastic with a stiff but flexible spring round the edge uh, here uh, this is the, this edge so it is also known as dutch cap it is used by the woman in her vagina to form a barrier in front of the cervix the way it has been used over here the diaphragm is dome shaped and is like a shallow cap it is available in different sizes ranging from 5 to 10 centimeters. The largest size should be used without any discomfort or undue pressure. Uh, so it requires a medical or paramedical person to measure the size of the device. And once the diaphragm is fitted, a woman can insert and remove it by herself. So initially, the healthcare workers is required. 
So diaphragm in his head and position partly because of the tension created by the spring and partly because of the muscle tone of the vagina. Uh, this, uh, the disc dome shaped rubber disc protects from the pregnancy in two ways. Once it blocks the sperm from entering the cervix and usually when it's used by spermicide jelly placed inside the rubber done before the insertion will kill any sperm it comes in contact with. So that's how it acts same as almost condom. Uh, it's very important to observe that the vaginal muscle tone otherwise the, the vaginal muscle tone of the woman should be good otherwise the diaphragm may not remain in position. So this is how the diaphragm has been introduced over here. So here by introduction of like this it blocks the sperm from entering the cervix and inside this diaphragm is the spermicide has to be put. So failure rate, uh, typical use is 13 to 17%. Perfect use is 4 to 8%. That means usually what women are using, their failure rate is this much. However, if the, all the uh, procedure is followed and one is careful in using this, the failure rate will be only 4 to 8 uh, per 100 women years. And diaphragm should completely cover the cervix. And the device is usually introduced up to 3 hours before the intercourse and is to be kept for at least 8 hours after the last coital act. Ill-fitting and accidental displacement during intercourse increases the failure rate. So this is how the, this thing, the spermicide has been put and the diaphragm has been put over the cervix. So merits of diaphragm is, is along with the spermicidal, it is very effective. Failure rate is low. No risk or any kind of contraindication. It's quite cheap. Reduces the incidence of pelvic inflammatory disease and sexually transmitted infection to some extent uh, as compared to the male condom uh, where it is much more effective and protects against the cervical pre-cancer and cancer conditions. And there is no interference in the sexual pleasure as compared to the male condoms. So demerits, it requires the assistance of doctor and any health person during initial uh, fitting. It requires the privacy and time to place it in the vagina and requires periodical checkup and requires facilities for its uh, proper care and storage. And if it is properly used, uh, diaphragm, a good quality diaphragm can be used for one year. So risk of vaginal irritation, abrasion and urinary tract uh, infections are there. How it's not suitable for women with uterine prolapse where the pelvic floor muscles are not that good and that's how it can come out. So the, the uh, diaphragm uh, was being used quite frequently earlier. Nowadays it's not being used. Another barrier contraceptive is vaginal sponge goes by the trade name of today. It's a small polyurethane foam sponge diffused with spermicide. The sponge is shaped in a way that it can be fitted into the cervix and has a loop on its outer surface which can be used to pull out the sponge after use. And this as uh, diaphragm it should be inserted before the coitus and provides protection for 24 hours. It should remain in its place for at least 6 hours after the coitus and sperms are trapped in the sponge and they are destroyed. So this is another diagram of sponge. The sponge absorbs the sperm preventing them from the entering the cervix and spermicide and inside this it kills the sperms. Another uh, uh, barrier contraceptive is cervical cup, uh, cervical cap sorry. Uh, it is made of soft rubber or plastic and shaped like a thimble with a raised rim and designed to fit completely over the cervix. And spermicide again in this one also is placed on the outer rim of the cap in the portion of the cap facing the vagina. That means over here. Uh, it, uh, this uh, prevents the pregnancy by blocking the sperm from entering the uterus. So this is how the cervical cap is fixed. Uh, it fits snugly over the cervix, preventing the sperm from entering the uterus. 
So considerable portion of the cervix should be present for this proper fitting to occur. Here also one can see it's a properly fitted uh, cervical cap with the spermicide inside the cap. So criteria for the use of cervical cap is that the size of the circular rim should fit the circumference of the cervix closely and it is usable only for services that do not taper. If that is the case, then the fitting should not be proper. The cervix must be long enough uh, to protrude into the bowl of the cap and it must be healthy so as uh, situated uh, in the vagina that it is accessible to the woman's fingers. It is made in different sizes, small, medium, large and extra large sizes are available. So with trial of error methods one can, uh, you choose the cap uh, size which is properly fitting onto the cervix. So diaphragm and cervical cap if taken together, the risks include irritation and allergic reaction to the diaphragm or spermicide and increased frequency of urinary tract infection and vaginal yeast infection is also there. In rare cases, toxic shock syndrome may develop if the diaphragm or cervical cap uh, is left inside for a considerable period of time. This applies to uh, this thing, vaginal sponge also. And it may cause an abnormal, uh, cervical cap may cause an abnormal pap test. So after discussing the physical barrier methods, now let us come to chemical barrier methods. These methods usually kill the sperms or immobilize the sperms and this way chemical contraceptives help in preventing the pregnancy. The chemical contraceptives which are in use are in following forms. It can be used in tablet aerosols, cream, jelly, suppositories, foams, soluble films and pastes. So advantages of chemical barrier methods, they are easy to administer, available free in health center and not very expensive uh, if bought outside. And demerits must be inserted deep down and in all such points where sperms are likely to reach, especially if their um, barrier method is not fitting properly. Must be applied each time before sex and this itself may cause irritation and burning. So what are the chemical agents being used? Uh, they are capable of destroying sperms and are incorporated with an inert base. So introduced in the vagina before intercourse. The base may be gelatin, glycerin or wax which melt at body temperature. And they should be preferably be inserted at least 30 minutes before the act and no douching to be done before 8 hours. They are not very efficient family planning methods when used alone. That's why they are always used along with the barrier methods. Uh, physical barrier methods, I mean to say. So, spermicides used with other methods like condom or diaphragm and marketed in various forms like we have discussed before uh, containing the compound which is called as nanoxenol. It is available in 12.5% nanoxenol 9. As so a forming tablets with suppositories utilize a chemical base which decreases carbon dioxide which in turn helps the distribution of spermicidal agent throughout the upper vagina. A spermicidal film that can be used vaginally or over the penis is a small sheet of material that dissolves in the vagina. That's also available which is a film is put over the penis which acts as a spermicide. So just uh, to recapitulate uh, typical use of the failure rates, the natural and barrier methods of contraception, the failure rate is uh, comparatively slightly higher than the other methods which will be discussed subsequently. So if uh, uh, this thing, if we are using the fertility app, the failure rate is 5%. And with the diaphragm, with the no methods, the failure rate is 15%. And uh, with the diaphragm, uses 17%. The condom, 13%. Natural cycles, 8%. So if it is strictly followed, then, then only it will occur. And the pill, patch, vaginal ring, that is 7%. 
So here we finish natural and barrier methods. Subsequently, the IUCD uh, and permanent methods will be dealt with. Thank you.